Imagine you have a curve, okay, to each point in uh, on curve, I'm associating in the scale of it. In other words, I'm saying that I'm defining a scalar field on you know a curve actually. And one of the example could be that you could have you know a charge, like you can assume that that's a kind of a charged wire, and to each point on this wire, like you have a your charge associated with it, and you want to ask the question that what would be the cumulative charge on this wire. Okay. Um, uh, for example, each point has a certain amount of heat associated with it, and you are interested in that. Okay, you know what is the total heat, you know, energy through the entire curve actually. Okay, so how we can do it? So, so in other words, what we like to do that? Okay, like F is something that is physically representing, you know, some quantity, and you want to accumulate that or integrate that or sum up that that physical quantity you know through entire curve and how we can do it I know every curve associates a path okay and then compute um, the F at each of the path okay and maybe I can call it for example or we can use the parameter T as well and uh, multiply it with the P prime of the T and integrate it over the entire interval or whatever the domain of the definition of the path is actually. So this would be defining a new species of integral, like integrating the scalar field but on curves, using the Riemann integration actually. Simple integration that we have defined actually. Okay. Um, I know and again we discussed it in detail last time that so when I'm trying to integrate F you know, over this curve, so I have to add this term into the equation because this is going to kind of, you know, measure the distortion actually. Okay, so we talked about it. Okay, so this factor is due to the distortion or to compensate the distortion actually, okay, in the area. Take it. Is it making sense? <coughs> um, then let's, let's talk about um, some of the key properties of it, for example, um, we can we can say that um, okay, what would be the key property? I know that a curve can have several parameterization, mm -hmm. and this integral is depending on the parameterization. In other words, we are making a specific choice of the parameterization. Okay, and through that parameterization, you are computing the integral. The question is, if you change this parameterization, would the value of the integral line integral would change? Okay. In other words, I'm saying, is this, you know, line integral of scalar field is well defined actually? So it would be well defined if it is not depending on, or if, if it is independent of the choice of, you know, what you call the parameterization actually. Okay. Um, we showed something similar about the length of the curve. That is, when you're computing the length of the curve, parameterization doesn't matter. So no matter what parameterization, choose, you know, for a given curve. You can, you can have the same thing. So we can do the precisely same thing here. I mean, so 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 let let's let's show that like this guy is well defined actually. Okay, so it's well defined. So what do you mean by well defined? That this value of this number of this integral is independent of choice of Independent, independent of Sir. price of parameterization. Can you all Sir. see the board? Sir, I mean, you start here and just. Sir, can we switch on some of the lights? Ah, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Choice of the parameterization. <coughs> C is basically say f of f of but p 
e of square phi of t, okay? Where phi is a map from the you know interval j into i, while for i you can assume that it's a to b, and for j you can assume that it's c to d actually. Okay? The question is if I use this parameterization, am I going to get the same answer? See how to do it. We're going to do the same what we did last time. In other words, start with this expression, so f of p of p, and log of p prime of p, and I will return this expression in the terms of the deparameterization q. So how to start? Precisely the same way that we did. So you say that say t is you know, say phi of u, okay, and make changes as per this actually, okay. So, so this is going to be uh, c to d, okay, and um, so c to so c you can treat c as the phi inverse of the a, okay, and you can uh, treat say uh, uh, d as the phi inverse of the b actually the same notation as we had previously. And, and the dt would be what? So it's going to be phi prime of u, okay? and du. So this f of p of t is now going to become f of p of phi of u, okay? and the p prime of t is going to be what? I can uh, compute it. So how can I compute it? So how shall I compute it? So that's the relationship between you know, uh, P and Q. So what will be the P prime in the terms of the Q? Okay. What would be the P prime in the terms of the Q? So if you, if you compute the derivative of this guy with respect to the time t, okay. I mean you can treat, so what would be this? So, so this is going to be p prime of phi of u, right? Times phi prime of u, right? Phi prime of u and d2, dt is going to be. No, this is simply going to be p prime of phi of u, right? Um, and dt is going to be phi prime of u and d. Are you happy with this expression? That y p prime of t is going to be p prime of phi of t. So I have this, I substituted t equal to phi prime of u. So wherever I have t, I just substituted, you know, phi of u. So nothing is changed. And I just change dt by phi prime of u. So that's what we are doing. Okay, so we are not doing anything. Now, I would like to do what, or I can do what? Is that this phi prime of u for phi? I know that it's an increasing function, so it must be, you know, a positive number. So it, if it is a positive number, it, so it should be same as if I put it in absolute or without absolute actually. Okay. And then this number I can take it inside, you know, what you call the norm actually. So c of d, so f of p of phi of u. So p of phi of t is q of t, so this must be f of q of u. And if you take this inside and multiply with it, so what are they going to be? So it's going to be p prime of phi of u multiplied by phi prime of u and it's more and it's d. And what you can say about this that q prime of that's q prime of phi of u. So what did you get? Uh, equality c to d, so it's f of q of u times q prime of u. That's precisely what you wanted actually. That's precisely what you wanted. That you replace, I mean if you replace this parameterization by a new deparameterization expression will be the same as j. Phi prime of u is a positive q. Yeah, that's what the definition of the phi. This is including in the definition that this phi is increasing actually. So 
So this phi, phi is an increasing function. If you look at the definition, okay, of the Lipper, phi is increasing. If it is increasing, you know, an increasing function has a positive derivative. So obviously, phi gamma of u must be positive. Okay, so you can put it in absolute and you have it as. So what does this mean? That the line integral of a scalar field is unaffected by change of the parameterization. Okay, it would stay same. Okay, it's independent of choice of the parameterization. So this is what is the case when we said that okay, you have a vector field, a scalar field, and how to integrate or how to compute, you know. Um, the line integral of a you know, scalar field with respect to, you know, um, you know, around the curve or on a curve. The next thing you can, we can, so what would be the next thing actually to imagine? The next thing would be that now imagine instead of having a scalar field, you have a vector field associated with it, with it, you know, with this curve actually. Okay? In other words, you are taking the points of the curve, in other words, you are taking P of T. And you are, you are to each p of t at t you are associating a vector with it. Okay, so in other words, to each point you have a you have a vector associated with it. Okay, you know, something is flowing over it. Actually, okay. you have a vector actually. You have any direction. Okay, any direction. Okay. So you, can, you, can, you may take this as that, okay, something is flowing over this curve. Okay, you are interested in what would be the net flow of that thing over this entire curve. Okay. In other words, so recall, what was the definition of vector field? So how would we, how would we will define vector field? Vector field is a, a, a map, so that's how it's going to be the definition. So vector field.
you know, associates a vector in Rn with it actually. Okay, can associate a vector in Rn with it. And you know, if this map is continuous, we're going to call it it's a continuous vector field on curve, differentiable, it's a differentiable vector field on curve, and so on and so forth. So forth. What do you mean by F operating? What, what kind of points you have inside the curve? What kind of points you have inside the curve? Sir. How does it look like? The vectors. Continuous points. C is the image set of I. Yes. P. It's an image set of I under P. Vectors. Okay. So C, I mean if you if you would like to write C explicitly. Okay. You would like to write C explicitly, the C would look like this, that it's the set of P of T's where T is from I of T, where each of this P of T is you know, a, map in, uh, a member in R and okay? And when you are saying that F is operating on the C, you are saying that, okay, take an abstract point, so take an instant, for example, if this is the domain of the definition for this curve, so you are saying that, take every single instant from this interval and take corresponding point in Rn and to each point assign a vector to it. Okay? Assign a vector. So P of T is a point in Rn. And you are operating And f of p of t is an element in. So you're going to say that that's that's how you have to define a scalar field, or sorry, a vector field on a curve. Okay. And what I am interested in mainly, I'm interested in what would be the meaning. Okay. What would be the meaning of computing the the flux of this vector fields along the curve C? Okay. That would be one way to interpret it. Or what would be the cumulative behavior of this vector field over this the curve C, if F is representing some kind of flow or some kind of thing? That's how you define it. So if you have been given an opportunity to define this integral, how would you like to define? What do you mean by you know something is flowing over it actually? or something is moving on the curve, something is dynamic on the curve. How does it going to look like? Imagine yourself. Imagine that you have this curve and you know water is flowing on it. Okay. What kind of vectors would show the flow of that thing onto the curve? So so at the moment you have this vector field. Okay. But this vector field, you know and have associated curve at any point actually. Maybe this is also possible. This is also possible that you have a region entire in R3, okay, and you have lots and lots. So, 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 so there is something which is kind of you know going here and there. So that's a vector field. Okay. And in that field you have a, a curve actually. Okay. So it means that to each point on this curve, you know, there are vectors associated with it. I mean, if to each point in the region you have vectors associated with it, that means that to each point, you know, you know, uh, on curve you have vectors associated with it. Actually, okay. But the, but that those vectors can have any any directions actually. So it's not necessarily that you know it would look like they can you know they can they can go crazy. But I am interested in what is the flux of this vector field on this curve. I am not interested in, you know, like the things that are flowing here, are flowing here, are flowing here. I am only interested in those things that are flowing onto the curve. The question is how to, how to intuitively, what to do intuitively so that I can have. So, the vector speed direction same over here. 
वेक्टर्स के डायरेक्शन से मतलब व्हाट यू मीन बाय दैट मतलब जो हमारे पास कर्व है सर उसके साथ भी हमने वेक्टर एसोसिएट ओके हियर बिफोर बिफोर सो सो थिंक अबाउट अ कर्व एंड आई एम सेइंग समथिंग इज गोइंग टू वर्क ठीक है हाउ डज इट गोइंग टू लुक लाइक how does it going to look like so imagine so imagine you have a car actually moving on this curve okay so the path to follow so how does it jis tarah sarkar hai us tarah uski motion hogi jis tarah kar hai us tarah ki mobile but how to say this precisely what do you mean by jis tarah ki mobile velocity change hogi ha velocity har ek different hogi bilkul that's that's another point matlab wo hogi kya different hogi but how does it going to look like i mean You already have made a picture in your head, actually. Okay. So imagine, imagine I have a vector. Okay. Say, you know, if if something is flowing over it in a vectorial sense, how does it how does it should look like? Should it not look like this actually? Okay. In the direction of the. Okay. In the direction of the curve, roughly. But what name should we give to these vectors? What do you think?